Investing is a means to put money aside while you are busy with life and have that money work for you so that you can reap the full benefits of your labor in the future. Investing is a means to an end result that is more satisfying. Warren Buffett, the legendary investor, defines investing as the process of laying out money now in the anticipation of collecting more money later. One, the purpose of investing is to put your money to work in one or more types of investment vehicles in the expectation that it will grow over time. Assume you have $1,000 saved up and are ready to dive into the world of investing, or perhaps you only have $10 extra per week and would like to get into investing. In this video, we'll walk you through getting started as an investor and show you how to maximize your returns while minimizing your costs. But before we get going, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos. Robo-Advisors Following the 2008 financial crisis, a new type of investment advisor emerged, the robo-advisor. Betterments John Stein and Elie Broverman are widely regarded as the pioneers in the field. 2. 3. Their objective was to employ technology to reduce investment costs and streamline financial advice. Since the introduction of Betterment, more robo-first companies have emerged, and even major online brokers such as Charles Schwab have introduced robo-like advisory services. According to a Charles Schwab survey, 58% of Americans expect to employ robo-guidance by 2025. 4. A robo-advisor may be right for you if you want an algorithm to make financial choices for you, including tax loss harvesting and rebalancing. Also, as the success of index investing has demonstrated, if your goal is long-term wealth development, you might perform better with a robo-advisor. Employer-sponsored investing. If you're on a limited budget, aim to put just 1% of your salary in your company's retirement plan. To be honest, you probably won't even notice a contribution that little. Contributions to work-based retirement plans are deducted from your paycheck before taxes are calculated, making the payment even less painful. When you're satisfied with a 1% contribution, perhaps you can increase it as you receive annual raises. You're unlikely to overlook the extra contributions. If you have a 401k retirement account at work, you may already be investing in your future with allocations to mutual funds and even stock in your own firm. Minimum Account Opening Requirements A minimum deposit is required by many financial organizations. In other words, they will not accept your application for an account unless you deposit a particular amount of money. Some organizations would not even enable you to register an account with a deposit of $1,000. Before determining where to open an account, it's a good idea to shop around and read our broker reviews. Minimum deposits are listed at the start of each review. Some businesses may not demand a minimum deposit. Others will frequently cut costs, such as trading and account administration fees, if your balance exceeds a specific threshold. Others may provide a specific amount of commission-free trades in exchange for opening an account fees and commissions. There is no such thing as a free lunch, as economists like to say. Though many brokers have recently raced to reduce or eliminate trading costs, and ETF allow index investing to anyone with a bare-bones brokerage account, all brokers must generate money from their customers in some way. In most situations, your broker will charge you a commission every time you trade stock, whether you purchase or sell. Trading fees start at $2 per trade and can go as high as $10 for some discount brokers. Some brokers do not charge any trade commissions at all, but they compensate in other ways. There are no nonprofit organizations that provide brokerage services. Depending on how frequently you trade, these costs might add up and have an impact on your profitability. Investing in stocks may be highly expensive if you jump in and out of positions frequently, especially if you just have a limited amount of money to invest. Remember that a transaction is an order to buy or sell shares in a single business. 
If you want to buy five different stocks at the same time, you will be charged for each one. Assume you decide to invest $1,000 in the stocks of those five companies. This will cost you $1.50 in trading charges. If the fee is $1.10, which is equal to 5% of your $1,000. If you invested the full $1,000, your account would be reduced to $950 after trading expenses. This indicates a 5% loss before your investments have even had a chance to generate anything. If you sell these five stocks, you will have to pay the trade expenses again, which will be $1.50. The round trip, buying and selling on these five stocks would cost you $1.100, or 10% of your $1.1000 original outlay. If your investments do not generate enough income to cover this, you have lost money just by entering and exiting positions. Loads on mutual funds. Aside from the trading fee for purchasing a mutual fund, there are additional expenses involved with this sort of investment. Mutual funds are professionally managed pools of investor funds that invest in specific asset classes, such as large cap US stocks. When investing in mutual funds, an investor will incur numerous expenses. The Management Expense Ratio MER, which is charged by the management team each year depending on the number of assets in the fund, is one of the most essential fees to consider. The yearly MER ranges from 0.05% to 0.7%, depending on the type of investment. However, the larger the MER, the greater the impact on the fund's overall results. When you acquire mutual funds, you may encounter a number of sales costs known as loads. Some are front-end loads, but there are also no load and back-end load funding available. Before purchasing a fund, make certain that you understand whether it has a sales burden. If you wish to avoid these extra charges, consult your broker's list of no load and no transaction fee funds. When opposed to stock commissions, mutual fund fees actually benefit the starting investor. This is due to the fact that the costs are the same regardless of the amount invested. As a result, as long as you meet the minimal criterion for opening an account, you can invest as little as $1.50 or $1.100 per month in a brokerage account. The term for this is called Dollar Cost Averaging DCA, and it can be a great way to start investing. Diversification and Risk Reduction Diversification is regarded as the only free lunch in the world of investment. In a word, by investing in a variety of assets, you lessen the risk of a single investment's performance, negatively impacting the entire return on your investment. Consider it financial lingo meaning don't put all of your eggs in one basket. In terms of diversification, investments in equities will present the largest challenge. As previously stated, the costs of investing in a high number of companies may be harmful to the portfolio. It is very impossible to build a well-diversified portfolio with a $1.1000 investment, so be aware that you may only be able to invest in one or two firms, at most, in the first place. This will increase your risk. This is where the main advantage of mutual funds or ETF comes into play. Both types of securities typically contain a large number of equities and other investments, making them more diversified than a single stock. Simulators of the Stock Exchange People who are new to investing and want to gain trading experience without jeopardizing their money may find a stock market simulator useful. There are numerous trading simulators accessible, both for free and for a price. Stock market simulators provide users with fictitious, virtual money that they can invest in a portfolio of stocks, options, ETs, or other securities. These simulators often track the price changes of investments, as well as other notable variables such as trading costs or dividend payouts, depending on the simulator. Investors do virtual trades in the same way as they would if they were investing real money. Through this approach, simulator users can learn the ins and outs of investing, as well as experience the implications of their virtual investment decisions without putting their own money at risk. 
Some simulations also allow users to compete against other players, which adds an extra incentive to invest wisely. What is the distinction between a full-service broker and a discount broker? Full-service brokers offer a wide range of financial services, including retirement planning, healthcare, and a variety of investment products. They have typically catered to high net worth individuals and frequently necessitate large investments. Discount brokers have far lower entry requirements, but they also tend to provide a more streamlined set of services. Users can place individual transactions with discount brokers, who are also increasingly providing instructional tools and other services. What are the consequences of investing? Investing is a current commitment of resources to a future financial goal. There are various levels of risk, with some asset classes and financial products being intrinsically riskier than others. However, virtually all investing involves some level of risk. It is always possible that the value of your investment will decline over time. As a result, one of the most important considerations for investors is how to manage risk in order to reach their financial goals, whether they are short-term or long-term. How do fees and commissions work? Customers are usually charged a commission for each trade they make. These typically vary from $5 to $10 per trade. Due to the high cost of commissions, most investors believe it is smart to restrict the total number of trades they make in order to avoid spending extra money on fees. Fees are charged on certain other types of investments, such as exchange-traded funds, to pay the costs of fund management. In conclusion, if you are just starting out and have a little amount of money, you can invest. It's more involved than simply choosing the right investment, a challenging task in and of itself, and you must be conscious of the constraints that you confront as a beginning investor. You'll need to do your research to find out what the minimum deposit is and then compare the commissions to those of other brokers. You probably won't be able to buy individual stocks cheaply and diversify with a modest quantity of money. You will also need to select the broker with whom you want to open an account.